Doing good. How are we hearing and how do we how are we looking? We're doing well. All right, cool. Doing good today. How are you guys doing? Yeah, we're really good. We're not in our normal home, so we would come in a little bit better. And then we came up here and we'll see. Hopefully everything is gonna go good. Awesome. Do we just do a screen share and then we can go to our slideshow yeah. type thing? Yeah. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, by the way. Heck hey, yeah. thanks for having us. You thanks have a beautiful us. event happening here. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Oh, well, we're really honored to be here. You know that. We love you. We're stoked. Thank you so much. Let me uh, update the title here so everyone knows that you guys are on. And uh, you guys can go ahead and, and start your screen share anytime you'd like. Do I just push that then? And yeah, we just hit stop one. Oh, wait, there we go. Now it'll work. Sorry about that. Okay, so here I go. I don't know, desktop one. Share, I don't know. Oh no. I have to get privacy access. You can do just the browser. You can drag the tab off your browser and just share that one browser if that's easier. Oh, here we go. Let's see. Okay, so let's. We're trying this now. Here. <laughs> there's always there's always got to be something, you know. <laughs> All good. We can see your screen now. Okay. I don't know. I hope this works. So here we go. Looks like it's working. Okay. So no sound. Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Yes, I can't see your slideshow. Hit play slideshow. Hopefully that'll go full screen. There you go. Now we can see it. Can you hear us here? Are we? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here, let me. It's all good. We can see you're sharing the screen. Get your video up. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I think we're ready to roll. So if I do that, like, I think we're okay. Working great. Good. Amazing. Okay. <clears throat> ready when you are. If we're on, then we're going. <laughs> well, I think we're on live even. Are we on live? Awesome. I think we've been on live the whole time. Perfect. Well, <laughs> well, that's, why call, that's why they call it live then. Good I thing imagine. everybody out there didn't hear us bickering or anything. You know, anything could happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we we're like so beyond stoked to be here today with everybody. And, um, you know, Potent Ponics, Steve. Uh, we call him Tricks because it's Tricks up as Steve because he's just always doing such amazing stuff. Super honored to be here. The the lineup of speakers is just incredible. Fantastic. And um, I think more than ever, what we really wanted to focus on today was just really touch on the acknowledgement that so many of us out there are struggling that we're struggling um, not only, you know, in our own human spaces, um, not only as a part of this great, incredible group that we call humanity, but in our families, in our businesses. And we really wanted to touch on and talk to you all today about things that are that we feel are really important to help alleviate the struggle so that we can be more on track and have a greater understanding of how our health and wellness is really um, where it comes from and how we can really proliferate it into uh, a much higher being. Yeah, and we wanted to just acknowledge everyone out there who is you know, doing amazing work and really know how to grow and really are looking for those extra tips, you know, out there. And we know, you know, we're hopefully we'll be able to show you some extra tips here today on how to, 
you know, put these systems in, in, in order and, and working for you. But really, more than anything, like Kelly said, we just we really wanted to touch on the spirit of what's happening in life right now, the hardships of business, um, why regenerative farming matters. And to us, you know, being Dragonfly Earth Medicine and, and having a family farm, we are, um, you know, part of a, of a collective and a pure certification and a certification that, you know, brings healthy medicine to the market and then brings healthy practices to the market. And, and for us, regenerative farming is, is a way of life. And so we want to take you down a journey of how regenerative farming can lead to regenerative healing and health and how some of these systems can help you go beyond what the medical system may be giving us at the moment and uh, maybe show you some practical ideas on how we can really thrive in this world and, and maybe take some of these hardships that we're feeling and maybe make an opportunity out of them. And that's what we're trying to do is take, you know, some of the harder things that are happening in life and turn them into an opportunity. And this type of event where we're coming together and learning is, is one of those opportunities. So we wanted to thank the, the pure certified community, all the pure certified farmers out there and everyone else um, on this journey. <clears throat> Um, and, and keeping cannabis sacred is really, you know, what, what, what we're talking about. This is essentially a cannabis conference. It's also a self-reliance and an aquaponics and, and a journey through natural farming conference. Um, but, but cannabis is often at the center of it because it's a master plant. It's given mm -hmm. us this, it's given us this, this, this space to, to farm and share our ideas together. So we wanna continue to see cannabis in that sacred space and keep our body, our temple in that sacred space. And we think these farming practices do that. And I think that, you know, um, what, we, what we most often look at when we think about what success is, is it's more of a pyramid thing. You know, a lot of us in North American society in, um, you know, ever since the industrialized society has come into our realm, success has always been how much money you make, where your career is. But we're really wanting to say that that's a very um, isolationist way to look at your life. And it's also something that really has get, gotten us in trouble um, in the past, not only us as, as, a, as a human uh, group of people, as, as a whole, you know, human existence, but also in our individual lives. It's really important that if you have a wheel, you want the wheel to run true. You want the wheel to run so that it's always uh, equal. Effortless. And that it's effortless. That it has finesse to it. It makes things easier. And um, you can't do that unless every single one of the spokes of those wheels are th the same tautness, that they're all looked at, that you've paid attention to all of those things. So we really feel like in this new time when we've been in this lockdown, so many of us have gone internal to try to figure out what is it that makes us happy. And really, when we talk about all of these things, spirituality, health, resources, you know, it all is aligned with our happiness. And, and when, we we're, when we're going to talk even further about microbiology and how microbiology is, is played into our health and well-being also is that the highest and pinnacle is for us to be happy. And how can we reach that happiness? It's like a snake eating its tail. If you think that happiness is the end or if you think happiness is the beginning, then we've totally cut out all of the things that are really important in reaching happiness. Because we know that happiness happens when we're in perfect balance. We know that our plants are happy when they're in perfect balance. When the soil is in perfect balance, then you have a, 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 micro, a, a huge diversity of beneficial microbiology. And so we're going to talk about how um, the gut microbiome is going to help. <clears throat> we're, we're leading a cleanse right now online, and a lot of people are doing a cleanse. And part of doing a cleanse is to get you in touch with the food that you're eating and get you in touch with your bowels and your gut and your microbiome and to understand cells and neurological systems. 
and to make that realization towards nature as a very similar system. So what we're going to show you is how the human biome is so intertwined with the ecological biome. And if we're always trying to reach out for happiness, and we know that happiness is our ultimate balance, that happiness is bringing us to our ultimate benefactor in life, that we're able to make the best uh, decisions, all of these types of decisions come from the microbiome, which is within ourselves. A lot of people relate that microbiome only to our gut and what we feed ourselves, but our microbiome is all the way into every single one of our cells. We're going to go into the vast amounts of microbiology that's inside of our cells. That last, um, that last one really goes into how specific maladies, depression, schizophrenia, obesities, all of the different cancers, those are all because we're out of balance. And again, I want to use the term balance with happiness because happiness and balance are synonymous and we can only find that when the microbiology within our own body is totally within balance, where we have a large amount of beneficial microbiology that actually consume and eat all of the pathogens that are inside of our body to keep them from colonizing. And the only way that we can do that is how we're feeling, because that creates a whole multitude of electrodes and our nervous system, as well as what we're eating, as well as what's going on within our environment. So again, this is going back to regenerative soil practices because we're talking to so many of you all that are farmers and our soil uh, people, that when you're working with a well-balanced soil, then that means that you're ingesting it, you're getting a mimicry from nature. We know that nature has all of the answers. Humanity- And it's the re-up of what you get in your body without a healthy environment around you, you can't continue to- uh, rely on um, your body to continue to have everything it needs. You need nature to continue to give it to you. <clears throat> and a lot of people focus on probiotics. And I think this, it, in some ways, this is, is cutting off the, the picture. I don't know how to move it. Um, let's see. And um, that's you can cool. see that the, that the probiotics stay in the upper parts of your digestive tract, and they don't necessarily go down into your lower gut. So you need to look to, you know, towards soil microbes and different kinds of microbes to get lower into your And what we mean by that biome. is a lot of people, you know, you just eating a really awesome yogurt once a day is really fantastic. It's re-upping the upper digestive tract, those lactobacilluses that really are only going to last about 72 hours. It's the same as the LABs that you make for your gardens that, that you spray on your plants or you put into your soils or you add into your ferments, which we're going to go into a little bit later, is that these sort of uh, microbiologies are very fleeting. They don't uh, cross the blood-brain barrier. So we're, what we're talking about by microbiology and a full intact microbiota is looking at what's within the soil. So many of these species that you can see on the side in green are what we find in a really healthy soil as well. You know, um, one really quick amazing story is that there was a study that was done on uh, people in Africa who, a tribe that was specifically specific to eating zebras. They raised zebras. Everything about who they were was the zebra people. When they studied the microbiota of those human beings, it was exactly identical to the zebra's microbiota because they had so many years of that together. So we are dis connected now from these incredible soil from practices the from, from the, the source humus. that we once had it continues to isolate things and we're into for, um uh, fertilizers and fungicides and these things really take away from the vast multitude of microbiota that helps protect our body and also hang on that also that tribe that was involved you know that the indigenous tribe that was with the zebras also had such a strong microbiome that when they were, it's horrible, but they were given antibiotics, you know, to, to, to check their microbiome, which we don't condone this practice at all. It's horrible. But 
what they found when they came back is after they took the antibiotics that there was zero change to their microbiome because it overtook even the antibiotics that were given to them. So it just shows you the power of nature and the power of humans as nature. And it shows how it can build your immune system. It can make your skin happier. It can build and, and inhibit healthy growth and, and blooms throughout your body. It can detoxify your organs. And it's your organs that are little bits of life to your whole entire system and, and oxygenating your system. So your body can go anaerobic and pathogenic, or it can stay oxygenated and, and uh, you know, beneficial. And just like your soil, we have to think about what are you feeding your soil? It's not what are you feeding your plants? What is it that you're feeding your body? And it's again, it's not what you're feeding your stomach. It's what are you feeding all of the microbiology that's inside of your body? And, and on that last uh, um, slide that we were just looking at, it goes into the vast amount of different species of beneficial uh, bacteria. And if even these beneficial bacteria and microbiota get out of balance, it also can become pathogenic. Yeah, or degenerate. Or degenerate. So now we can talk about the human virome. We, I prefer to call it the human pathogen. Um, it means that... Just to give everybody an idea of, of understanding this incredibly complex Body that we system live that we live in and anything on the planet that is alive has a microbiota. We're going to go into what plants microbiota is, which is the endophytic system. And the human virome, you know, for lack of a better word, it's a word that you can look up. You know, some people don't believe in viruses and in some, we, in, in some ways we don't see a virus as a, as a real thing. It's an exudate from a cell that's unhappy, but we're not going to break down whether we believe in viruses at the, at, the, at the moment. It's a pathogen. And that's why we want to say this is called the human pathogen. The and we want to be able to see viruses as all other pathogens rather than just isolating them out. That's why we need to realize realize that there's trillions and trillions and we can't to focus on one virus is like focusing on one single crystal in an entire like field of snow on cbd without the whole plant <laughs> um you know the human virome is is, is the, the point is there's 380 trillion pathogens we'll call them say it again 380 trillion pathogens found within our cells That's a lot. found within our virome and if you've understood the the ancient you know chinese proverb of of, of taking one grain of sand and the, the emperor says how can i repay you to the peasant and the peasant says give me one piece of uh rice for every checkerboard uh square and double the rice every time you go to the next square and the the, the king thought he was getting off early uh get, getting off easy and if I find come to find out if you actually do that Fibonacci sequence, that's more rice than has ever been created even to this time. And if you look at the difference between a hundred, a hundred thousand, a million, a billion, and a trillion, look at you know what what does a trillion pieces of rice look like as opposed to a bit? It's mind blowing. So the the point is, the word trillion really doesn't. It's not something you can comprehend. <laughs> and the idea that we have three hundred and eighty trillion potential viruses, potential sicknesses in ourselves, what it does is it says, we're alive for a reason. We're a human being that's based off the environment. And in our humus being natural living way, our body, the only way in our own true health that we can live to be over 120 years old is to have a healthy biome because it controls the virome. It controls the viruses that are in there. These cleanses that we do, they rid our, they, they detoxify these, these pathogenic compounds and, and they empower the, the killer T cells and the helper cells to, to activate inside the body. And that's, these are the types of, fa of, of factors that we, we, we bring this into our 
farming practices and into our food and eating practices. And this is why we're explaining it to you all is because so much of this, of this uh, community, the cannabis community, the plant medicine community, people who understand plants and understand that, that, that now we can start making the bridge to our own health and well-being. We have this uh, awesome understanding because Josh and I have been have been educating and sharing information with so many amazing people out there that now it's time to bridge that gap to everything that's happening in your garden and everything that is happening to your, your plants body. is the exact same thing can be replicated with what's going on in your body. And now so many of us who understand the word of what regenerative means in our gardens, we want to bring you to an understanding of what regenerative means inside of our own bodies, which means that if there's any kind of a pathogen at your garden's door, if you see any type of leaf eating mildew, if you see any type of root eating uh, pathogen, that you know that you have There's a complete imbalance. sound structure, which means that you have a multitude of diverse microbiology, different types of soil structures. Or indigenous different... microorganisms that you've cultivated. Why do indigenous microorganisms work? Why does IMO3 work to IMO4? Because you're, you're building the strong organisms and they're eating the pathogens. You, you might say to the, to the soil, it doesn't matter if there's pathogens in there because it's, it's proven that all that is is fodder to a healthy organism. And the healthy organisms will, with the right breaths of fresh air and oxygenation, will overpower pathogens. It's proven in the rhizophagy cycle, in the root systems, and in the rhizosphere. And it's even proven through the stomata and through the every breath that we take that we go through our nose. It's a part of the homeostasis that we live in. And these, these farming practices help create homeostasis. It's what mulch is. It's what IMO is. It's what, you know, um, <clears throat> all these types and, of and systems And Josh are. was talking about IMOs, and it's the same as inoculating your body with like say soil microbes or inoculating your body with lactobacillus microbes. It's awesome. You can get or any of the multitude of bacilluses and different fungi. You can get it into your body. But the real question is, is can your human virome, can your human pathogen be able to hold on to those beneficial microbiology? Can the soil, can your plants be able to hold on to the beneficial microbiology to carry that plant all the way through its incredible its entire life cycle and can it carry our body through its entire <clears throat> life cycle so that we don't have illness so that we don't have sickness or when as something happens in our environment that might create imbalance which happens all the time that that body or that plant or that soil or that area that you're trying to keep healthy can totally interact with any type of an imbalance to create balance right away. And again, we see that in nature over and over again. And all of these discussions is just bringing together our own human experience and our own interaction that we have with nature and how we can best utilize in these times of, you know, people are feeling depression, people are feeling Which isolated. Which affects your biome. It's affecting your biome. It affects your, your, the way that your cells expand by feeling. So you have to, you have to try to find ways to feel well, to activate your, your neurological system. That's why we're moving into polyculture and away from monoculture because we need extra cultures. That's why we're talking, if we talk about climate change, we're talking about biodiversity. We need more diversity. It's my, maybe we do just natural farming. Maybe we need to learn more about biodynamics or, you know, learn more about permaculture. You know, all we're doing is we're giving ourselves more tools for our tool, for our tool kit. 
Yeah, and and again, if if you want the answers, we're gonna we're gonna explain to you scientifically. We're gonna explain it in a really a really easy way to understand, in a biological way, also just in a way as is like, oh, that's just common sense to understand that if we really want true answers that we know are going to work, that we don't need to go through scientific experiments, that we don't need to understand things that we don't already innately understand, it's going to nature. It's lying down on the soil. It's noticing what's Frequencies happening into your garden. Earth. Yeah, all of these microbiology have their own frequency. And when you have a soil that is in beautiful balance, it has a frequency that sings and is a frequency that actually creates life and creates health. And it, and it will push away negative frequency. So not only is this happening on a microbiology level with actual life things that are living, it's also happening on a frequency level that the higher the frequency is, the easier it is to totally beat out that lower frequency and vibration. And, 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 and if we look to our, you know, to the basis of our health <clears throat> and our well-being, which is our cells and, and, and our blood. You know, we, we, we're, we're going to try and, you know, up, uptake from the earth into our cells, you know, things from nature through whole foods. So, you know, the only way we can protect our myelin sheath and our adaptive immune cells and, and, and stop a cytokine storm is through these gut systems and these interactions with microbiota. And it's, it's the way that we, you know, we clean the, the, the the fine hairs within our 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 intestines our fine hairs in our intestines are so, very much so the same mm -hmm. as the fine fungal hyphae of a plant so this sacred interaction between gardening and health is, is through this right here what you're seeing the rhizophagy cycle and give thanks to the doctors and and the and the universities that have that have put this 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 forward because we appreciate it. And it also just, you know, a very basic human understanding that although we're seeing it very scientifically, what we're talking about here is something that we all innately know within our DNA. And if any of what we are saying to you all today and right now resonates on a deep level, it's not really because we're teaching you anything. It's because you already innately know inside of your own being and that is the connection to nature. If something sparks you that makes you feel a little bit excited and maybe a little spark of happiness or something that's like, oh my gosh, that reminds me of something. It's because that's your own bridging to nature that you already have an incredible vast understanding uh, to, to understand. And these type of uh, photos and, and these type of visuals are just for us to understand maybe in a different way. To, to but we do really, really it, uh, intuition. hope. Yeah, we really hope. Josh took the words that I'm about. You want to build the intuition. The intuition is where the true knowledge is. And Science that intuition is, is what is plugged directly into nature. So the more that we have balance, the more we have happiness. And the more we have happiness, the more we have intuition. And that intuition is absolutely a direct teacher, mentor mentorship, education, right from Mother Nature herself. So the intuition says mulch your garden, fall is the time to mulch, use diverse mulch. Now the science says because the rhizophagy cycle and the root systems are mining through that system. They're, they're searching and they're sending out fungal hairs. And, you know, you've heard Paul Stamets and different, you know, mycologists talk about how does a how does a, how does mycelium live in soil when it's surrounded by again trillions of pathogens that really should just go right through the mushroom wall and eat the mushroom and kill it but it doesn't it doesn't kill it because it has a, a, a higher resonance around it it has these bacteria and fungi um, companions and it's exudating 
to get more of the companion. So what you find is at the edge of the root, you have this exudation point where the plant is putting out sugars and, and amino acids and, and different, different, as well as different frequencies, oils and, as and well frequencies. as the vibration. And, and it's, as the hyphae find different zones in the, in the soil that it wants to suck from the plant and these and the scientists have proven through um testing the plants that the plant only uptakes the healthy microorganisms from the soil and that's magical and that's a teaching for our own body the plant in its healthiness is only going to take up healthy microorganisms from the soil it's exactly the same as our own body is that anyone who is healthy out there with a full balanced beautiful microbiota both in cells as well as your upper and lower digestive tract as well as on the outsides of your skin you are going to be totally resistant to any type of pathogen that comes close to you or around you because you you're a healthy issues. balance yeah, I mean, you may have a very small problem and, and you're going to be able to, again, consume, transform the pathogen into food, just like the root hair is emerging protoplasts out of the edge of out of the end of the tip, the tips of their roots and and uptaking and transforming this and putting it into the protoplast of the plant and 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 and, and, and holding it in the plant and then the plant it builds the microorganisms and puts those market microorganisms back into the soil. So as the plant's alive, it's uptaking and, re and returning the organisms back into the soil through these, to the, 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 all these different amazing things that you can see on this, on this root. And it's, digest, and it's the root. same too, as we as human beings are uptaking and exudating. And we need to think about our us as, a, as an individual in this incredible microcosm of human beings that we are absolutely a part of a collective consciousness that if we are taking care of our own heart space, if we find balance within our own heart space, then we become a happy, healthy, balanced, part of a much greater system which is this collective consciousness which everything that we intake if it is of nature then that means that everything that we exudate is also of nature then that means that we're not putting pressure on our our epigenetic on on the world outside of us on nature that we're in perfect balance with it because every one of us is partaking in this huge vast system of humanity in the same way that a plant is partaking in a huge vast network of say a forest or a soil organism is taking place in a huge vast network of a full balanced soil. So the more that we can be beneficial microbiology and not pathogens, then that's when we are going to be able to colonize more beneficial human beings to be able to put more beneficial information out like this so that we can everything that we can create and co-create with humanity and with nature is going to be of utmost value to the entire system that we were talking about so that our wheel runs properly and we know there's a water biome and an aquaponics biome we we're just we don't All, know that biome so well so we're, we're speaking to you from a soil perspective well so we know that we use when we algae as, and we use you know azolas and different kinds of ferns and, and there's a way so many ways in the tropics where it, the, there's different ways that you can bring them two together and I, that's what we love about working with tricks is you know finding ways to do that um, and we know that and water is absolutely life as much as soil is life it's so whatever we're, come from. it's whatever we're intaking is what we're exudating so the same with water we want to be able to take in clean water and whatever we're putting out we want to be able to put out clean water as well and I love this because it, it talks about, you know, how the, the, you know, the different kind of organisms that are going into the roots and, and the, the, you know, the facultative microbes are always really interesting to us because they can, they can propagate in, in an anaerobic non-oxygenation environment and they can propagate in a in an oxygenated environment. And that's, you know, probably a really powerful, you know, organism to have around, um, you know, and, and I like this, you know, diagram shows us how, 
you know, these different organisms are stored in the ganja, you know, so when it's pulling up these organisms into the plant, you start quickly realizing, oh, well, if I'm going to make medicine, you know, true healing medicine out of cannabis, if I'm just looking at the resin, I'm probably going to miss out on the full spectrum that the plant has to offer. Because we can see here in the seeds, you, you have certain bacterium and, and certain organisms that only reside when the plant has a, a, a chance to to, to consolidate, you know, those organisms into a seed. So bringing a seed into your, to your extract can make sense depending on what you're doing. You know, maybe it's the sun leaves. Maybe everyone just drops the sun leaves out, but you don't realize maybe, hey, there's Bacillus pseudomonas in there. And there's, you know, there's, there's different aspergilluses, which in, in, in a lot of ways, there's aspergilluses that are good mm -hmm. for us. You know, some of them, you know, are a bad, but as, aspergillus orze is, is miso and you would want that aspergillus. But um, I ahead. also think that it, it's really important that when we're wanting to take care of something that we're not just taking care of the trichomes. Like if our focus, like Josh was just saying, is only the trichomes, then we're really missing the point here. It's the same as if we're only pulling out CBD, we're isolating our thought processes and we're isolating our creative spaces and how we're going to put out our thought processes. It's really important that when we're thinking about something and doing a project, or we want to, or, or we want to uh, learn about something, that we're really looking at the entire part of it, because we know that those trichomes are going to uptake the secondary metabolites, and those secondary metabolites are created by the microbiology. That's what we're looking at here within the plant. It's the same as our health and well-being are our secondary metabolites, the way that we feel, the way that we go around in the world, the energy that we put out, the diversity that we have within our brains to think up different things comes from a vast diversity that's within our own body that's also within the plant. So what we produce, just like what the pr plant produces, the more diversity that we give to it, the more medicine and medicinal compounds that we're going to get out of it, the more that we put into our body, the more potent our words are going to be and, and our thought processes. And the reason why they call them secondary metabolites is because there's not a guarantee that you're going to get a certain amount of, you know, say medicine out of a plant just because you're growing it. You're getting secondary metabolites based off your environment and what you've given to it. So it's important to recognize that when a plant is growing, uh, we know you like to think of it as a conduit connecting the atmosphere to the rhizosphere and that the leaves are, are eating from, from the phylosphere and, and the air microbiome and, and, the, and the air is you're partly you're gardening from the air. So, you know, having clean air or having wild zone around your property, you know, with different, you know, types of plants, you're going to get a filter through those plants. You're going to make a healthier air microbiome. And then you're going to see the endophytic, you know, microbiome of, of the leaves and the plants and the flowers. And, and the plant is the perfect union. The garden is the perfect union for a healthy person to exist, a healthy plant, a healthy mind, body, and soil is what we always say. Yeah. And, and these are, and, they, and these, these, these tell us why, you know, the plant is like we have always said is it's surrounded by pathogens, but it's only going to uptake what's healthy. So we have to continue to build the healthy environment. Mm -hmm. And what we're showing here is that same idea of what we were talking about before is this idea of humanity just constantly trying to do isolating things. We're isolating medicines. We're taking plant medicine and we are creating a pharmaceutical off of it because we've only isolated one or two compounds from the plant. But what we forget is that we are this vast network of living organisms within our body that has that, makes our, that absorbs makes us who we are. absorbs things in a different way that we need the full complexity and here we are we're looking at pharmaceuticals this is something that has been isolating we know and i really challenge anybody out there to think of anything that a human has isolated that has actually been helpful for the earth or for humanity or for 
for any earthlings that are that are on the planet right now it's often symptomatic and only taking care of one problem where that it's you know often ailments are like energy you don't just get rid of it, it it's energy it moves to something else so that the taking to the, the whole system into account is is the true health and well-being and microbiology does not understand isolation like what we're looking at here and what we just saw in the last slide it dies in a face of that it can understand that when we continue to try to isolate something that we're going to lose a vast amount of it a lot of focus is talking about how we're losing white tigers or how we're losing our glaciers or but let's think about what is it that we're losing when we lose the white tigers or the spirit bears or our glaciers What's the microbiology that's su supporting that particular life that is going away? What microbiology is going away when we look at a field like this that only has one type of plant, that has one, one tree way off in the distance? And probably has we've plastic lost, underneath it. We've lost micro, microbiology here because we've lost our diversity. And if we look at this in the same way that if you're only eating McDonald's or you're only eating protein, processed foods, which is exactly what this field is doing. It's only eating processed foods, which is NPK fertilizer or pesticides. It's the same way that a body would break out in an eczema. We're going to give it an antibiotic. We're going to sterilize it. All of these things are bypassing the very intelligent micro flora that creates health and well-being so when we see something like this all we can a, see is a, a disaster it's a disaster getting ready to happen because it is fully reliant on everything that's isolated in the same way that maybe you are fully reliant off of getting all of your fluids and all of your food through an IV in your arm because it's bypassing the microbiology that's inside of your body. And this is just what's happening underneath what we were just looking at. So, oh, it's pretty, it's beautiful. Well, it's organized. We need to really it's, it's wonder dead. what in our brains is sick for us to think that this picture is something amazing and glorious and life-giving when or it's this. Or a human achievement that's something to tout because it's not something to tout. What it is is the demise of health. What it is is we've outsmarted ourselves so far away from nature that we actually think that this is something awesome. But when we start to pick it apart and we start to realize it's actually this. So this is what we're trying to get everyone out there is to use that very critical intuitive thinking in everything that we do. Are we using creativity that's of nature or are we using creativity that's of a sick system that continues to put our life, our life patterns, human and nature in dire, you know, straits? Um, and, and I want to go back to that slide. So again, what are we going to feed ourselves? We need to feed ourselves fodder that beneficial microbiology loves. We cannot feed it isolated food that's smashed together that we call food that has no nutritional value because although it may taste good, just like that picture of the green field, it may look good to us but it is not feeding the more intelligent microbiota inside of our body that is helping us to think in a much wider diverse way so that our wheel can run, um, it, it, you know, true. And so we get into the diverse, to the evolution of humanity and we go into what we feel is the answer. And, you know, aquaponic systems are one answer and and there's been some incredible ways and in systems that people have shown how to use that so many blessings on that on an earth standpoint and on a like the tierra and the and the land of the of the world you know the only way that we're going to change the way things are right now is with a lot of mulch it's going to take a lot of mulch to change the way things are right now and also hugo cultures and Hugo culture is one word. Other words are terms like swales and 
carbon sequestration farming. Um, a key line system is similar to a Hugo culture, but key line plows Biodiverse are- Biodiverse accumulation is all of these different systems are all about how can we have biodiverse accumulation? And when we talk about biodiverse accumulation, that's us mimicking nature. Because if you look into a forest, all nature wants to do, and we say this all the time, and we've been saying it, I think, since we've ever gotten together. If you look at Mother Nature, her <clears throat> number one goal is just to make soil. That is what she does. Everything here, all of the disasters on the planet, everything that's happening, the leaves dropping, it's all mulching. So what we're trying to do is to create a mimicry of nature because so many nature systems have been harmed by humanity or even nature herself has wiped out certain areas that we would like to go get in and, and maybe create a home or, or create a community. And what well, we need to look to nature to understand understand how is it that she started this biological accumulation to create biodiversity to create life and we want to encourage critical thinking you know we want to <laughs> encourage self-reliance and we want to encourage self-empowerment and you know it's like big pharma and even in some cases big education and uh big big pharma big big ag big education it's almost like a war on biology because every, every everywhere you go they're taking away this natural system and they're feeding us this synthetic system. So we go, you, you drive by dairy fields in, in the world. And if they're, they're this disgusting, smelling, horrible situation, which makes zero sense. That right there is a disconnection in humanity right there, because that is one of the greatest gifts towards agriculture. And the fact that there's cesspools being created near a dairy farm makes it, it, you know, you makes your mind blow up. And then you drive through towns, you know, right now in, in the Northern hemisphere. And what you find is the sacredness of the leaf mold, leaves. All the trees in the, in the Northern hemisphere are dropping their leaves right now. And what I'm seeing in town right now are people bagging up their leaves in plastic bags and putting stacks of plastic bags on the side of the road, waiting for some municipality to come clean it up. Honestly, we we haven't been. I don't in know town. what to do about it. We haven't been in town in a really long time. We don't get out, side, a lot. so we don't get out very and we, much. We come out of town and we find bags of leaves <laughs> in plastic, and it is probably just the same as if somebody were seeing a whole bunch of dollar dollar bills, pla you know, packed into plastic bags, and they were put out on the side of the road for a municipal truck to come pick up. Like that's they're the like, way wow, that we think about they're, it. They're, they're <laughs> bagging up our future wellness into an unhealthy single-use plastic and you know they might do something with it maybe and how did we get here we got here because of this isolationist idea that is killing us here's a beautiful picture of so much diversity for this to even be able to happen we've got food we've got fodder we've got multi different types of biology that have already tried to soften this wood so then this very aggressive species of fungi can take over because it's the perfect microbiome as well as the perfect environment for this to happen so all all too often soils are devoid of organic matter and and fungi so and also hang on and and also and 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 carbon is is being released into the air through fires and it and these systems have proven a tree pulls water up out of the soil through the fungi and releases water into the atmosphere. And I, we just put up a, an amazing YouTube link on, on how much water a tree releases into the air. And we're trying to stop fires by taking all the limbs away from the trees and burning them. So flip that on itself onto a regenerative mindset and say, you know what, we're on our farm, we're not going to burn any thing. We're not going to, unless it's a wood stove and there's re reasons to burn stuff. So it's not, you can have a campfire. For our heat. It's not like yeah. dogma. It's, I'm, what I'm saying is 
instead of having giant, huge burn piles, save the wood, chip the wood, save the wood, inoculate the wood with garden giants. Maybe you don't put it on your bed right away. Maybe it sits on your land for one year and accumulates indigenous microorganisms. The only thing that's gonna give you diverse indigenous microorganisms and white hyphal hairs like this is gonna be raw materials breaking down. So when to be a carbon sequestration farmer right now, you think to look towards Hugo culture whenever we, so we have a stack of, of end cuts from buildings. We have wood chips all over the place. And, and we, whenever we build a new bed, we just mound up a huge amount of this material. And then we just fold the topsoil over on itself and we plant something simple in it for the first year. And a lot of people talk about, wow, you know, exactly how do you do that? And exactly how much, well, there is no exact with nature. You don't have to go into a forest and you're like, well, exactly every single year, it's different. Every single year, there's a different amount of foliage that falls on the ground. It's okay for us as human. And I really think that the word truly is derived from humus. I believe that we are humus beings. When we just find our connection to that understanding of, you know, mulch love, then we actually find out that mulch equals love, that mulch equates love. And mulch that if shows we that want you love to, yourself. If we want to reach happiness, that's a state of love. And when you have love, then you have balance. Ultimate wellness. And you have ultimate wellness. And that absolutely does come it's hard. from mulching because that's what comes from a healthy, constantly digesting soil that is always reciprocating whatever it is being fed. And we need to recognize that whatever we're drinking, whatever we're eating, whatever people that we're around, whatever news media that we're watching, whatever it is that we decide to intake into our psyche or into our body or into our frequency or what we allow into our soils or into our feeding programs of our plants. All of that affects us and affects our plants on an incredibly deep, deep level because we're not just looking at our plants. We're looking at the genetics that the plants are going to create after that. We're looking at a long lineage of genetics of plants that we're re reciprocating, as well as a long genetics of human beings that we're reciprocating in wellness. It's our job to create better, more balanced life. And, you know, this flower of life seed mandala with, you know, petals and moss is a, is a representation of what people can do when they come together. Give thanks to the Peace Seed family for creating that and helping us realize the power of polyculture and realize that the, the balance that, that comes from the environment and realize how to create, you know, an amazing garden with plants growing on themselves. In this picture here, it's hard to see, but on the left over here, these are all tomatoes and there's, you know, hundreds of pounds of Roma tomatoes coming in with cannabis on the edge and superfoods like maca and, and also lettuces growing around the outside. And, you know, and, and the ways that we've, we've done this is, is through the, the mulch and through, um, you know, the, we, this is a picture of using fresh trees, ramial branches, ones that still have the fluid, ones that still have cambium going. You can see there's life in that birch and that betulinic acid in the birch. When you use ramial chipped wood or a John Payne, you know, style chipper, look up John Payne composting, um, you can see um, that it, it it feeds fungi and bacteria right away. It's almost not, it's almost not a carbon when you use ramial chipped wood. It's almost more like a nutrient. It's well balanced. It gives you well balanced because it's offering all of the nutrients that haven't, um, you know, gone into the soil or gone up into the air. Here's a picture of us just taking that fresh ramial wood chips putting another, you know, layer that we would have dug up right from the, from the aisles, which is our compost piles. We describe that so often. All of our aisles are our compost piles for each year. We just 
packet full of a lot of different mulch and then we put it on as a top layer. This is all direct sow cannabis. We are just direct sowing it all. If it doesn't come up, then that seed wasn't well-rounded and didn't have enough diversity in order to understand the microbiological uh, diversity that we have in our soils. And the fact that we just feel like we really only want super vibrant, ultimate potential health and yield and for us that comes from direct seeding and what we're doing is creating a sponge an earth sponge we're creating something for the organisms to come into and then that becomes a filter so all of our farms if any pure certified farm is going to be a positive impact to nature and here you're going to see us building another giant terrace and and we did this for a farmer that had never grown this way before and grew this incredible diverse garden and during the hottest time of the year this summer when it was a 40 degree well if in celsius 40 degrees celsius or even up to 50 it was almost 50 degrees celsius here in in, in canada and british columbia at least and uh he didn't water for 21 days for three whole weeks for that whole thing because there was so much water retention happening in the soil and all of the roots smartly growing together, communicating with one another. And again, this is a brand new garden. This is a very first year. That last picture that you saw, this was just us taking everything from the whole area. We knew that his plants were already going to understand, and we knew that the soil and the microbiology was going to understand what was already there on that farm. So we just dragged sticks and chips and everything and just everything, put it right every, on everything there. Everything local from the land, and, and these are wild grasses, and there's leaves, and there's branches and this is native soil and so that's going to be taking into account your local app you know Appalachia and your terroir and it's going to give your plants that true flavor from the area that you live in and you know it's going to grow fungi you know on through the plants I mean it's amazing plants can grow through the mushrooms but the mushrooms bloom and then the plants just they burst through them the only thing is you have that much mushroom around your plant, you know, once they start to rot, you kind of have to push them away, but you'll figure that out because you're smart and you're intuitive because you're gardening like this and you figured it all out. And um, uh, I want to go into our teas really quick. We're running mm -hmm. short on time. And, and I just want to say, you know, in the cannabis industry in, in, in Washington, when they legalized, can, uh, you know, cannabis for the first time, there was 750 million pounds of garbage in the first year. And after four years, of of making teas and we have put others in, but this is the only waste we have on our property because we do closed loop farming everything and from what you're nature. looking at is just a whole bunch of nettle uh, stalks and stems as well as cannabis stalks and stems in that last picture this idea is just understanding that frequency is all a part of it we're growing Here's we're growing medicinal mushrooms out of logs so you can do log culture medicinal mushrooms right under the cannabis um here's um a, a flowering tea we call it a flowering tea because it's the time of season that not only are our plants flowering outside so we want to make sure to give them a lot of that phosphorus that plants are also you know very diverse in as well as a lot Lot of the bacteria that's on the outside of the plants also goes into this big fermentation. We're hurrying through this. Um, there's a lot of examples of on our YouTube pages of us going really deeply into it, but we're going to hurry through it. But the idea is that you're using raw plant material that is already biologically intelligent to your own region and your own area. And I'll let Josh describe what's going on right here. Well, I just, I, you know, from a natural farming perspective, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you see a piece like this, to us, this is what an indigenous microorganism farm looks like. A first, this, start, this, first this, year. This is how you accumulate indigenous microorganisms. And then you can get airborne and and when you do land when you do build your soil like that you really don't need a lot of teas because that's so crazy but when you do need crazy teas, meaning my microbial and good, it's so good rich. but when you do you can make teas and what we've come to over the years and we've been doing these kind of teas ever since the late 90s is 
we take all of the fodder and we chop them up on the stump right there and we put them in this open fermented container. This is a 250 gallon container and we chop it up and we use this this uh, or and we mix it once or twice a day. We mix it like this once or twice a day and we let it ferment for five to seven days. And mixing it not to where you're adding a bunch of aerobic things to it. No, mixing it meaning we're just, just pressing down. down the greens to make sure that it just gets into the recipe. We're not like mixing it. That would be adding a lot of aerobics to it. And then you're going to be, you know, causing more, uh, um, uh, colonization and more blooms of beneficial microbiology in that stage, which Josh is going to get to right now. And we use, and, and we use the local indigenous soil here that you can see soil and leaf mold and we put it there and we that's our inoculant our inoculant is our land is already has inoculants on it and it's way better than any store-bought inoculant and when we push the top down this is the natural fermentation bubbles that we get and those bubbles tell us how far along that we're getting along in the process the more that it bubbles and you can see the water once the water turns a mucilaginous it almost gets thick at first you can see that it's green in there. And then we strain it through this strainer right here. And then we activate it. This is the dirt, the soils, and we activate it. And anyway, we get amazing plants, you know, and we'll, we'll just leave it there that, you know, things on our property grow really big. We use natural systems. Thank you, Steve. Tricks, you've been to our property. You've been on our land. Not a lot of people have. Not a lot of people have because we live far away in the wilderness. But, but the idea, what we want to get back to is that this is not difficult. So what we started out in the very beginning of our talk was we talked about how we can help alleviate some of the stresses that people are feeling. And we gave a multitude of different ways that people can alleviate the stresses that they're feeling by feeding themselves well, and by also feeding their gardens well, by being more a part of nature, and by trying to deprogram our brains on what we think is healthy and natural as to what actually is healthy and natural. And you can look towards other DEM peer certified farms for other- and and educators and other educators for teachings at dempurefarms.com. You can find our products at dragonflyearthmedicine.com, as well as a lot of amazing articles. And we're on and IG a lot of and we do tons of information. Reach out to us. We'd love to talk to everybody. And it's so hard talking on a screen, but if I could give the biggest virtual hug to all of you all out there, like I so... I so am giving you all so much hug, so much love um, to every single one of you for, for holding the space. And uh, and we have, a, we have a really good Discord link. Maybe Steve can put a Discord link in there somehow and, and we can get people on there. I would smoke a doobie with each and every one of you right now and I would personally pass the joint to you and smoke it afterwards. I love you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. I got to ask, how, how is that a Maro and how much did it weigh? And if it's not a Maro, what kind of squash is that? Um, it does look like a Maro, but what it is, is a hybrid from our land. You know, it's, it's we didn't necessarily plant it right. and plan to yeah. grow it. So what it what we what think we, that it is, is because it only had seeds on one seeds end, on one end of it. That was a butternut squash crossed with some type of a zucchini and possibly a, a giant pumpkin because it was absolutely as sweet as a butternut. And it made like, I don't even know how many pies, but it definitely filled up two full ovens just to be able to bake it off to make a multitude of pies that we put in the freezer. And we do plan on growing, we are going to enter the giant pumpkin challenge next year. I was going to say, I definitely want to try and get some seeds off of that one. That's awesome. I have some we for got you. you. <laughs> no, that's amazing. I was just going to ask if, if you did the, the big competitions, but it looks like uh, we're out of time. We'll have to have you guys back on the podcast sometime. Thank you again so much. Uh, for, for coming on and educating everybody and talking to everybody about regenerative right. practice. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Steve, for everything you do. Take it easy. Bye.